they have gold blood, and they can transform into all manner of frightening beasts. Osiris is the king of all the land made bountiful by the Nile while his brother Set rules the barren desert, and this isolation has made him bitter. Eventually, Osiris decides to pass the throne to his son Horus, who is in a relationship with the goddess Hathor. He cares about Hathor so much that he's gifted one of Egypt's greatest treasures, the bracelet of 42 stars, which can keep demons away. On the day of the coronation, everyone comes to the celebration, including every god but also every mortal in the city. This includes Zaya and her boyfriend Beck, a thief that doesn't hesitate to steal fancy things to make his girlfriend happy and perhaps run away together someday. After all the gods have given their regards and mortals have left their offerings, Osiris gives a speech and gets ready to put the crown on Horus. However they're interrupted by the arrival of Set, who pretends to be here with a gift but soon he fills the place with his own army. Then, he hands Osiris the staff their father had gifted him, asking for a fight because he thinks it's his turn to rule. Osiris refuses to fight his own brother, so Set kills him on the spot and declares himself the new king of Egypt. His first new rule is that not everyone will get to easily go to the afterlife, from now on mankind will have to pay in riches. Horus won't stand for this and he immediately begins fighting Set to take revenge on his father. They're both very good warriors with a similar level of skill, so they end up transforming into their metal beast forms to continue the fight in the sky. To help their master, Set's tropes come through and reflect the sun on their shields to blind Horus, giving Set the chance to claim victory and take Horus' eyes. Set is about to kill Horus too, but Hather comes through and offers herself to him in exchange for Horus' life, thus Horus is exiled instead. One year later, most of Egypt has been slaved by Set and now they lack the money to get an afterlife. Some gods have tried to defeat him to save the kingdom, but they all died, while Hather keeps playing the part of caring lover to survive. Zaya is a slave to Set's chief architect Urshu, who is in the process of building the tallest obelisk Egypt has ever seen. Beck has been sent to do manual labor, but whenever he has the chance, he sneaks into Urshu's office to visit Zaya. One afternoon, Zaya shows Beck that Set's army is coming back with spoils of wars. Meaning his vault will be unlocked in the evening and this is the perfect chance for Beck to sneak in and retrieve Horus' eyes. To help him, Zaya steals the pyramid plans from her shoe, replacing them with blank parchments. When night falls, Beck jumps from a roof into the carriage carrying the gold, which is soon thrown into the vault. There, Beck uses the plans they avoid most traps. But he accidentally activates one anyway and there's a third bridge that isn't on the plans at all. Fortunately, Beck is quick and nimble, so he dodges every attack and reaches the status guarding one of Horus' eyes. When he grabs the eye, he falls into a pit full of scorpions, but thankfully the light of the eye keeps them away. In the morning, Beck goes to see Zaya again. But Urshu has discovered the switcheroo and is waiting for him with a bunch of guards. Beck uses the eye to blind them all and escapes with his girlfriend, but as they run away in a carriage, Urshu shoots his bow from the balcony and kills Zaya. Moments later, they arrive at the temple where Horus hides, and Beck gets attacked by Horus with the staff when he doesn't immediately give him the eye back. Beck promises to do it if Horus revives Zaya, and Horus accepts to try. But his efforts are pointless. She's not hurt, she's already dead, and he can't cure mortality. Horus summons Anubis, the god of death, who takes Zaya's soul to the underworld to be judged. Beck is worried because she won't be able to pay the fee to the afterlife. So after Horus takes back his eye, Beck offers a deal, if Horus comes up with a way to save Zaya. Beck will show him the way into the pyramid to get the other eye. Horus accepts after explaining he may get some extra benefits if he becomes king again, and they take off after hiding Zaya in the temple. Meanwhile, Set's sending his army to attack another goddess stronghold when he learns about the missing eye. By the time Set goes to Horus' temple, his nephew is already gone. But he does find Zaya's body and takes her necklace after sending his men to find Horus. Back to Horus and Beck, they're currently climbing a mountain because Horus can't transform without both eyes and he needs help to defeat Set. Once they reach the top, Horus prays to his grandfather, the god of the sun for a blessing that temporarily allows him to transform again, and fly with Beck towards the solar divine vessel where Ra lives. Here, Ra's duty is to fight the 
Shadow Beast Apophis every day and keep it away from Egypt. Ra refuses to get involved in Set's conflict because he believes in staying neutral. Where his sons are concerned, not willing to play favorites. However, he does allow Horus to fill a flask with the waters that surround the vessel. Back in Egypt, the last standing rebel gods have retreated behind their walls. Saset takes the chance to visit his ex-wife Nephthys and takes her wings from her. At the solar vessel, Ra temporarily grants Horus some power so he can fly back with Beck. But he loses it as soon as they get closer to the ground and have a rather unelegant landing. Next, they need to use the flask of water to kill the desert, which would weaken Set greatly. But first Horus sends Beck to gather some regular water to drink. Near the waterfall, Beck is ambushed by Set's Minotaur army led by Menevis. Fortunately, Horus quickly comes to his rescue and easily defeats them all. But Menevis is only pretending to be dead. He waits for the right moment to push Horus and Beck off the waterfall before fleeing. And the only reason the pair survives is thanks to Horus' staff. Menevis reports back to Set, who kills him for having failed and sends his mighty hunters after Horus. Then, Set asks Hather to take him to the underworld, since she has access there because she used to be counselor to the dead. Hather pretends she'll think about it and when she has a free moment, she uses her powers on the sand to make it show her how Horus is doing. When Set finds her, he finally realizes Hather still loves Horus and she's been lying. All this time so he tries to kill her, but Hather escapes by opening a portal with her bracelet. At Osiris' tomb, Beck and Horus are pausing their walk back to the city to take a rest. Suddenly, Set's hunters show up riding giant snakes, and it's dangerous for Horus to fight them because he can't stand their venom in his current state. Beck quickly comes up with a plan, he'll run off to serve as bait while Horus hides among the walls. So when the serpent comes closer, he can sneak attack. The plan works and Horus manages to stab the snake, but it doesn't hit its weak spot. And now the staff is stuck in the beast's mouth. On their second try, Beck runs for longer and Horus jumps on top of the snake to kill the rider. Causing the snake to keep going without direction and fall off a cliff. There's still the other snake to take care of, but at that moment, Hather shows up. And uses her commanding powers to retrieve the staff and make the snake light itself on fire. The trio escapes safely but Horus isn't happy to see Hather because he thinks she's nothing but a traitor, not understanding she had to act not to be killed. Beck explains they're planning to get the other eye because he's seen the pyramid plans. But Hather informs them there's something they don't know about, a sphinx guards the pyramid and it will kill anyone that can't answer its riddle. Horus decides to ask the god of wisdom for help, and on their way there, he won't stop arguing with Hather about her choices, tired of being taken for. Granted, Hather decides to chat with Beck instead and is shocked to hear about Horus' promise. It shouldn't be possible to bring Zaya back, but for now, Hather doesn't comment on it. Moments later, the trio makes it to Thoth's temple, which is full of copies of the god because he only trusts himself. Thoth refuses to go with them and tells them to bring the riddle to him. Instead, but that would get one of them killed. Beck changes his mind by playing his ego and saying he'd tell the Sphinx that Thoth had been afraid of getting the answer wrong. The four of them start making their way towards the pyramid. And Hather takes the chance to scold Horus for promising Beck things he can't achieve. Horus doesn't feel bad though, because this lie is for the sake of the greater good. When they make it to the pyramid grounds, Horus decides to wait until night falls to pass undetected. While Thoth reminds Horus that Hather became Set's lover just so Set would spare his life. Zaya uses her magic on the sand to show to Beck an image of Zaya waiting in line to be judged. Because Hather used to guide souls too, she has the ability to speak to the dead, and she allows Beck to send Zaya a message of his fight to bring her back, which is cut short by Anubis. In the evening, the party approaches the pyramid to find it in constant movement. Beck chooses a door at random and jumps inside, where he parkours his way through a moving bridge that allows him to reach the wheel that makes it all stop. Now the whole group can enter and approach the Sphinx together. However Thoth gets the answer to the riddle wrong and the Sphinx begins attacking them. Beck and Hather step away, and Horus holds back the Sphinx while Thoth keeps offering possible answers until he gets it right. The correct answer destroys the Sphinx and the group is free to 
approach the center of the pyramid where they need to drop the water, but a trap is waiting for them. Hather and Horus get caught in a cage while Set suddenly shows up and steals Thoth's brain. Beck grabs the flask, intending to proceed with the plan, but Set gets him to stop by. Showing him Zaya's necklace and explaining Horus lied. Beck isn't sure who to believe. But that short moment of hesitation is enough for Set to steal the flask from him and destroy it. Then Set leaves, hoping the pyramid crumbling down will kill them, but Horus manages to open the cage. And escapes with his friends by using the wheel as protection. Outside the pyramid, Beck calls Horus out for his lies and comes to the conclusion. Gods don't care about their people. Hather feels they need to compensate Beck for all the lying and summons Anubis to offer herself in exchange for Anubis granting Beck passage to the underworld. Anubis accepts, and Hather kisses Horus before she's taken away, leaving her bracelet behind. So Beck can protect himself against the demons. Beck reaches the underworld safely thanks to the bracelet and begins looking for Zaya at the queue in front of the gate where the rich can pay for the afterlife and the poor are dissolved. Meanwhile, Set is making his beast transformation more powerful by adding Thoth's brain, Osiris' heart, Horus's eye, and Nephthys' wings to his magic armor. Then, he flies to the solar vessel to take revenge on his father for having exiled him to the desert. Ra explains he's wrong and that he never played favorites, all this has always been a test. He gave Osiris the crown and when the time came, he knew he had to give that power away, so he passed his test. Set was given the desert as a test of patience because Ra wants his son to take over the vessel one day. This enrages Set because he doesn't want to be stuck here, spending his eternity fighting a space worm, and he proceeds to attack his father. Ra retaliates with his solar beam that no god should survive, but Set has the power of multiple gods now and manages to defeat Ra before letting Apophis roam free. In the underworld, Beck finds Zaya and wants to give her the bracelet so she can pay her fee to the afterlife, but they're interrupted by Apophis' attack, which forces Anubis to close the gates for now. Zaya convinces Beck to give Horus a second chance, and Beck uses the bracelet to come back to Egypt, teaming up with Horus again. A carriage sent by Nephthys takes the duo back to the city, where Set shows up with Ra's spear in. While standing on top of the obelisk, he commands Apophis to attack the Nile which is the source of all life. Horus and Beck kidnap or shoot to make the architect get them inside the obelisk. While Horus makes his way up climbing, Horus and Urshu take the elevator and end up fighting. Their struggle knocks over a torch and the elevator catches on. Fire. So Beck ties his rope to the wall and jumps off before the elevator is taken over by the fire. Falling down as it takes Urshu with it. At the top of the obelisk, Horus finds Set and begins another fight. Set thinks he's winning this, but Horus is just the bait while Beck shows up for a sneak attack. Putting on his armor, Set attacks Beck, who removes the eye from the helmet before Set pushes him away. Beck throws the eye at Horus, but the god decides to do the right thing and save Beck instead of the eye. Horus apologizes to Beck for everything before finally transforming into his beast form, again, because it's good deeds and not greed that decide your worth. After leaving Beck safely on the ground, Horus goes back to fighting Set inside the obelisk, and by hitting the walls he manages to make the building crumble and hit Set as well. Once Set hits the ground, Horus kills it with Ra's spear. Afterward, Horus flies to the solar vessel and gives Ra his spear back, which instantly heals him with power. Ra wastes no time in fighting Apophis and sending it back the way it came, allowing Anubis to open the gates again. Horus returns to Egypt and receives his other eye from a child that picked it off the ground. Then, Horus checks on Beck, only to discover Set's push had wounded him and the boy dies in front of him. Overwhelmed with grief, Horus takes Beck's body to his temple so he can be next to Zaya. At that moment, Ra shows up and revives the young couple as a thank you to Horus for helping him. A few days later, Egypt is bright with life again. All the people have been freed and Horus is finally crowned king officially by Thoth. The first thing he does is correct the rules of the afterlife. Good deeds will decide if you pass or not, not your riches. Beck is named chief advisor to the king, and he gives Horus back the bracelet. So he can go to the underworld and rescue Hather. At last, don't forget like and subscribe.